the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Gloves Are Off. It should be an interesting one considering our co-host and our lovely guest, my co-host, Andrew Bethel. That's the nicest doing? thing you've ever said to me <laughs> in like a week. I'm slipping, man. I'm I slipping. know. Are you okay? You feel? Yeah, like I think a little bit of a fever. We'll a little see bit of what color, happens. Too, many, too much light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Pleased to be joined on my right, your left, is Nicole Stilger, new cap news anchor here, uh, the main anchor for the 5 o'clock. Appreciate you coming on and Thanks bringing in me. some sports knowledge too as well. Keep us on our toes a little bit. We'll see what, we'll see what can happen. All right. Well, it's anyone's game. Well, there we go. And we'll see what happens. Speaking of anyone's game, the CFL has turned into anyone's game or anyone's challenge. If you think about what the coaches have done, pass interference challenges have been a nuisance in the CFL and continues to be. That's why the CFL is like, all right, we need to make a rule change that you lose a timeout if you get the call incorrect. But if you get it right, you still get to keep your challenge. Here's the thing, or you keep your timeout, that is. Uh, here's the thing. They made this rule change just a couple days ago, which means it takes effect now. This is not a change for next year, which I find a little bit odd. And I will start with you, Nicole. Should leagues change their rules mid-season, even though it does really tick off fans and pundits like us alike? Well, I'm pretty sure you just answered it to what a ridiculous, ridiculous move middle of the season. The middle of the season, an already unpopular move, it, if it ticks everyone off, Honestly, like it, it, and it delays good. the game. It, it's true. And I think that's one of the things that's a little bit unfair uh, in, in terms of, like, it's, it's, it's been a nuisance. Last thing I want to see is the first 15 seconds of a game, all of a sudden a, a challenge flag is, is thrown on the field. But, like, to make it mid-season as opposed to, say, like, the end of the year, do you think that's unfair well, for some of the coaches? If you love the fact that CFL's listening to their fans. I just think timing's wrong. You can't make a rule change in the middle of the season because now if you sense – Go look back at every other game played before. Is there a problem? Is there going to be a rule change where someone would have challenged or not challenged based on now losing a timeout or if the game would have changed based on it? You can't do it in the middle of the season. Like, I, if it is, I'm like, there's a lot of sports that probably should ch change some rules in the middle of the season. You know, like NHL, start changing when you can call icings or how we're going to change icings or the dead puck area. Why not start doing things middle of the season? Or Just gauge the reaction, see how they're going. Keep the rules. Like, it's a mental thing, too. It just kind of it throws you off. I was going to say, like the 99 Sabres. I'm sure they would have loved to see that skate in the crease rule still take effect in the Stanley Cup final. Nevertheless, it didn't work out. But you still, okay, even though they did make the change, which is really odd during the midseason, you have to be happy about the change, yes? No, you have to. You, they should be losing timeouts for any challenge. If you're not, you're not challenged, you're not successful. It seems maybe that's our NFL bias and that we're so used to the, the way they're, that's played. You challenge, you lose, you lose your timeout. It just seems like a no-brainer. Like, why wasn't this in the rules? This seems like a Canadian thing. Like, we're going to give you a chance. If you mess up, we're not going to punish you. That seems overly Canadian. On the other end, how happy is everyone when you do make the challenge, you win it, and of course, no. Yeah, everything's good, but if you lose great. it, you, you uh, lose something you valuable. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. All right. How about this? Colin Kaepernick uh, decided to uh, take a stand, or non-stand, I don't know how you describe this, uh, when it came to the U.S. National Anthem, uh, people were asking him as to why he did it. And over the weekend, he came out and saying, look, I'm not going to stand for an anthem where you see black people as well as people of color being mistreated um, regularly. And at one point, you could be respectful and admire his comment. At the other point, you just realize that Kaepernick is, well, I don't know, Colin Kaepernick. It just seems off. There were some other issues, some mixed reviews from players, as well as coaches in terms of his stand, some even going as far as to question his blackness. I'm not going to do that, and I'm not going to necessarily pose that on you guys. My question for you is, do you think a player like Colin Kaepernick in particular, uh, in terms of what he did, is within his right? Fair or not fair? No. I, I honestly ask the question, who does Kaepernick think he is? Because when does he stand up? So let's say week seven, week eight, and he now starts standing up for a national anthem. Does, do we now get the sign of approval from Colin Kaepernick that racial tensions in the United States between cops and black people are better? Is that, is that where we're at? I, I don't like a player now putting themselves in, the, I, I will decide when things are better here. Because that's what's going to, that has to be a question that has to be asked. If you start standing in week six, week seven, eight, 
oh, well, why now? What changed in terms of like laws or the way society is that now it's, you can stand up? So okay. No. I agree with you. Timing is timing is everything on this one, especially since it's such a current event and it's a hot topic. It's a hot button topic. But when you have, especially a player like Colin Kaepernick, and not just player, the way he is, he's a bit of a punk. Like he doesn't, he ruffles feathers and he does things to do them. I don't know how much a basis he has. And I, I guess it kind of you raised an interesting point, and I'm going to throw this out at you guys. If this wasn't Colin Kaepernick, but say Russell Wilson or, I don't know, someone of, of, of excellent stature that, you know, like um, a Cam Newton, in this case, that protested. Would we have seen the same type of backlash that he, uh, Colin Kaepernick has seen? It's really tough to say. Because he does have a history of being that type of player. Exactly. But then it still comes along to a player, professional athlete, dictating what things are better in society. And the problem I have is that the flag means more, and the national anthem means more than just racial tensions in the United States. In Canada, they mean more than just, you know, one thing. There's a bunch of things that it means to different people. And by you not standing up for the country that you were born in, that you were raised in, that you represent, you're sending a pretty clear message to about everything. Because you're not, you're disrespecting the flag and your country over one thing, but there's like 100 million things else wrong with the United States. Why are they protesting that as well? Well, then it comes down to athletes just protesting, period. Do you think athletes should? You know, some people feel that athletes have to because they have a platform that, say, you and I couldn't have and can reach more people by doing so. They do have a platform that we don't have. But, but then but should they be protesting or they should they be taking stands? Athletes. They should, absolutely. I think, like you said, they can reach more people than we can ever dream of. But uh, I guess it just depends on... On who? On who? So if, if in and on what the topic case, is? Okay. Uh, well, how about we'll get to this very quickly. Um, we'll move on and then switch topics to uh, what happened in Rio. It seemed to be a successful games for the sport of golf. Uh, if you look at Rory McIlroy and in terms of his dissension, uh, Dustin Johnson, another guy. You look at some of the other big names, Jordan Spieth, another that decided to not go. And it seems Rory took that next step further, saying, "You know what?" I don't think the games will be as successful. Now it seems like he's eating crow and says, you know what, I'm glad I'm proven wrong. How sincere do you think Rory McIlroy is? Or is this guy just backtracking just because of, I don't know, sponsorship? I don't know if he's backtracking, but it's, it's, it's the best situation you could be in. The golf was a good hit at the Olympics. Everyone enjoyed it. It wasn't a bad tournament altogether. He can say, oh, okay, I was proven wrong. You know, kind of have a sincere moment. If he was proven right, then he'd come back out and say the other way, oh, I told you we shouldn't have gone there. Absolutely. I told you this. So it's kind of like he gets the best of both worlds in this one. He can be the nice guy and, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, golf. But, or he could be the villain if he wanted to. Classic case of foot and mouth. He, he, had to, he said what he needed to say <laughs> <laughs> to, to salvage his further, his previous comments. All right, we'll leave it on that note. Take a commercial break. When we return, we're going to talk about the CFL once again. This time, Johnny Manziel over the border. Good idea? Bad idea? We'll hear from these guys coming up.